Welcome to Compute 175. In this video, we'll learn how to define and apply key functions when sorting lists in Python. If you haven't already watched the video on key functions, go ahead and watch that now. Okay, just as in my previous examples, I have a list of integers called numbers and a list of strings called words. So let's run this code in Python. So the current order of the numbers is numbers 9, 5, 2, 8, and 10. I'm going to ask Python to sort the numbers by calling numbers.sort. Since lists are mutable data types, that means that the list itself has changed. Let's look at how the list has changed. So I'm just going to type numbers and press enter. OK. Now we see that the list of numbers is in ascending order. So 2 is less than 5, which is less than 8, which is less than 9, which is less than 10. Similarly, if we look at our list of words, so words and press enter, we see defenestration, atrium, cesium, easy, and beehive. If I take these words and I ask the list to sort itself, so words.sort, and then I'll see the contents of the list, so words. So now we see that the order of the list is atrium, beehive, cesium, defenestration, and easy. The words are now sorted in ascending alphabetical order, but we can sort more than just lists of integers and lists of strings in Python. So here, I have a list of five trinkets. Just as in my real world example, I have a Rubik's cube, a clock, a statue, a manatee, and a lamp. Let's take a peek at the trinket class. All instances of the trinket class will have an attribute for the name, the height, the width, and the country of origin of the trinket. I've also defined the wrapper method so that trinket instances will print nicely in a list. So let's take a look at my list of trinkets in the Python interpreter. So I'm simply going to type trinkets. And yeah, so we can see that the trinkets are in the same order as how I defined them in my Python file. Let's take this list and, just as with the list of words and the list of numbers, let's ask it to sort itself. So trinkets.sort. This time, Python raised an error. The error is saying that Python doesn't know how to determine whether one trinket is less than another trinket. What we have to do is define a way to map the trinkets to something Python already knows how to sort. In other words, we have to define a key function. Let's define a key function for trinkets that will sort by the country of origin. So at the bottom of this file, I'm going to define a new function called by country. And that's going to take a trinket as its single argument. So I know that my key function should return something Python already knows how to sort, and I know that Python knows how to sort strings. I also know that the trinket's country of origin attribute is a string, so what I'm going to do is simply return the trinket's country of origin. For demonstration purposes, I'm accessing the attribute directly instead of using a getter or setter. I'm going to save the file, and I'm going to run it. Let's look at that list of trinkets one more time. The trinkets are in that jumbled order that I found in the file. I'm going to test my by country method on a trinket from this list. So I'm just going to take a trinket, I'm going to call it t, and I'm going to say trinkets at index 0. So t is the root was cube from Hungary. OK, let's try applying by country to that trinket. And indeed, it returns the string Hungary. In order to actually use my key function to sort the trinkets, all I have to do is type trinkets.sort. But instead of providing zero arguments to the sort method, I'm going to provide a keyword argument called key. And I'm going to provide it the name of my key function. So key equals by country. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to sort. And let's look at that list now. So now, when we look at the list, we can see that it is in a different order than it was originally. Now it's the manatee from Brazil, the clock from Germany, the statue from Greece, the Rubik's Cube from Hungary, and the lamp from Wales. If we look at the country of origin, we can see that it is indeed in ascending alphabetical order. Let's try sorting those trinkets by height now. Just as before, I'm going to define a new key function. def by height. And also as before, by height is going to take a single argument, which is going to be the trinket. And I'm going to have to return something that Python already knows as a sort. 
I happen to know that the height of a trinket is stored as an integer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the trinket dot height. And I'm going to save it and run it. Okay, now let's look at that list of trinkets once again. And we can see it's in a scrambled weird order. But what I really want is I want to sort the trinkets by height. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the trinkets to sort themselves. But instead of providing zero arguments, I'm going to provide a keyword function called key. And I'm going to say key equals by height. So it's a function. So I should obviously use parentheses right here to say that it's a function, right? Well, no. If you provide the parentheses, Python will crash saying, oh, I tried to call by height, but it requires one missing positional argument. When you are providing a key function to the sort method, it's important to drop those parentheses. So trinkets dot sort key equals by height. So do not put these parentheses to call by height directly here in this expression. Instead, delete those parentheses and simply say trinkets dot sort key equals by height. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Okay, great. So it didn't crash this time. So let's actually look at that list of trinkets. So trinkets. So now the trinkets are in a different order. You can see that the manatees first, that was the shortest trinket. And then it's followed by the Rubik's Cube, the clock, the lamp, and the tallest trinket, which is the statue. What if I wanted to sort by descending order of height? So I'm going to define yet another key function called def by height descending. And it's going to take a trinket as with all of my key functions. And instead of simply returning the trinket's height, I'm going to return negative the trinket's height. So the thinking here is that if I return the negative the height, so if I take, say, the shortest trinket, which is six centimeters, it's going to give me negative six centimeters. But that's going to be much greater than the tallest trinket, which is 25 centimeters, so minus 25 is smaller than minus 6. Okay, that's a bit convoluted, but let's see if it works. So I'm going to save and run it. So now let's do trinkets.sort, and I'm going to use my key function, which is going to be by height descending. Excellent. So let's look at the trinkets now. Okay, good. So the first element in the list is the statue, which I know is the tallest trinket, and that's followed by the lamp, and then the clock, and then the Rubik's Cube, and then finally the manatee, which I know is the shortest trinket. It looks like my key function worked, but come on, this negative trinket.height, that's weird and convoluted and like backwards thinking. There's got to be a better way. So I'm actually going to get rid of this function by height descending. It's offending me. Okay, and I'm going to run that. So I still have my by height key function. So I'm going to call trinkets.sort, and I'm going to provide it the key function by height. Now, instead of simply calling it just like this, since I want it in descending order of height, I'm going to provide it yet another keyword argument. And that keyword argument is going to be called reverse. And I'm going to set it to true. So key equals by height, comma, reverse equals true. And so what this is going to do when I run it, and I look at the list of trinkets now, since Python knows how to sort a list in ascending order, it also knows how to sort a list in descending order if I simply provide the reverse equals true keyword argument to the sort method. I get the tallest item in the list is first, and the shortest trinket in the list is last.